Welcome to Off Screen. This week we're reading Loudmouth by Anayat Fakare, the incredible true story of how Morton Downey Jr. destroyed objectivity in American news media. What do we know about the writer? So the writer is a writer's assistant, I believe on um bill maher show real time with bill maher okay yeah that makes and, that makes sense with the subject matter sort right. of um he also has a pilot i guess that was optioned by amazon studios called the face in the heel which he wrote and is developing which is with, about wrestling yeah it's a comedic according to amazon a comedic look at the macho muscled world of professional wrestling where the action in the ring might be staged but the drama behind the curtain the oh. egos the gossip and the larger than life characters are all, all too real that's a similar sort of thing i think thematically to this right where the, it's sort of about the persona versus the person yeah exactly yeah. well said um so yeah that's what he has and then according to the hit list he has also is also in development on an original pilot with Ed Bernero, who worked on Criminal Minds, um, mm. and he was featured on the 2015 Young and Hungry list for what it's worth. Much oh, like our uh, last writer, much last like week. Katie Silverman. Yeah, that's you know. Well, first of all, I just don't really care for all these lists that much, but we haven't described what the hit list is. I'm a little disappointed because I haven't really. This is the first time I've read anything or really paid attention to the hit list. But I thought my my understanding was that it was supposed to be even more of a, like an amateur's kind like a of newcomer thing. Yeah, even more so than the blacklist because the blacklist has some pretty big names on it sometimes. But these people already sound pretty established too, or at least um, this this guy does. So I guess the main distinction then is that these are all spec scripts, whereas the blacklist I think includes assignments, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't think I don't know that the blacklist really makes as much distinction, I guess. It's just whatever yeah. script is uniquely associated with that year. And most of the time those end up being spec scripts or like obviously right. the Star Wars script might be the best script ever, but it's not being widely distributed amongst every agent and assistant in right. Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Or I guess production company. Anyway, um, um okay did you have anything else to say about did we even say this writer's name because it's very hard to say yeah i said it okay aniat fakare okay is how i'm going with it but do you, that's yeah. probably wrong <laughs> do we uh do we know anything else or is that um is that most that's of it? all we got okay uh shall i read the synopsis yes okay when we meet morton downey jr he's at the helm of a local talk show in new jersey he has a wife, Joan, and a daughter, Kelly, about to go to college. The show's doing well, but it only really takes off when Mort lets his short temper get the best of him. During a debate about atheism, he slaps one of his guests in the face on air. In response to the controversy, viewership skyrockets, and Bob Pittman, one of the station's execs, takes the show national. Within a year, Morton Downey Jr. becomes a veritable celebrity. He's not so much a TV host as he is a provocateur pitting opinionated or otherwise eccentric guests against each other in debates which often devolve into physical fights. They take the show on tour, which is where Mort meets a girl named Lori Krebs. She's a dancer who works nights at one of the show's venues. The two of them hit it off, and it's not long before Mort is spending more time with her than with his family. Once he gets back home, Mort's wife, Joan, confronts him. She knows everything, and besides his cheating, he's also failed to pay Kelly's college tuition forcing her to drop out of Stanford. Needless to say, they're getting divorced. At the same time, Mort learns that the network affiliates on the West Coast have decided to stop airing his show. It's simply become too controversial to attract any advertisers. But even when the show is canceled altogether, Lori remains by his side. They decide to get married, and gradually, Morton comes to terms with the fact that his 15 minutes of fame are up. Still, with successors like Bill O'Reilly, Jerry Springer, and TMZ, his lasting influence on the medium is undeniable. Nice, that's good. Short, quick. Yeah, I like it. Um, so, overall impressions? Overall, well, I'll save my overall impressions, right? Is there anything you want oh, to jump fine. into? Um, 
Well, I will say when I first started reading this, I wasn't crazy about it. And I kind of have a bias against movies like this, typically. I, I don't like stuff based on true stories. That was kind of why we did this script. I think we kind of said we hadn't done anything like this yet. Yeah. It was kind of political, and it was it was based on true story. And I don't know. I find it less interesting to to know, even if I don't know the story, just to know in the back of my mind that it was already set before anyone had a chance to write it. You can't take as many liberties that might be better for the story. If it was pure fiction, you could really cater it to just pure entertainment but anyway i i read it more and as i got farther into the script i gradually liked it more um i won't spoil my my what are we call it what our verdict i won't spoil it yeah, yeah i won't spoil my verdict um, but, yeah. one thing i did notice was that it began towards the end like it had one of those opening <sighs> teaser scenes so yes. you know after joy i know how you it, feel about yeah did that work for I was, you any was, better this time than that was gonna enjoy? be that was the first thing i was gonna mention was that because no it still didn't work yeah, for me because it worked better for me and joy because it was more it didn't work because you don't know why it, it was more work. abstract i think well okay so here here let me explain it first and then i'll explain because i think this could have worked for me but there were like three things right off the bat at the beginning before you even like get into the story that you have to get through. First of all, there's another quote which did nothing for me. It was, it was like a Mark Twain quote, right? No, I think it was Oscar Wilde. Wasn't Oscar it? Wilde quote. But anyway, you you have to read the quote and then you read this this flash forward thing, just like in Joy, where it's like a really out of context scene of him. It's just Morton in an airport bathroom. He looks really beat up and and awful. And he draws, like, a swastika on his face. And that's, like, all we get. And then it cuts to, you know, a couple years back when his show is first starting out. And then at the end of the story, we catch up again to that scene. Same device as Joy. And it still really bugs me. So you have to get through that. But then one other thing. There's this whole other framing story about him doing, like, a one-man show. It did not work for me at all. Yeah, don't, I, hate, I hate still that. don't so understand it. Every, every so often, the... Um, the film is like intercut with these scenes of him narrating his own life story in like a one man show on stage. To an audience that we don't see for most of the screenplay. And then right. suddenly at one point we do. And it doesn't really make sense why it's those right. people. It's like a fantasy. It's not, it's a it's fantasy, not really right. a thing he's doing. But it's more of just like, to me, it felt like it was just a way to guide the audience's reactions to teach or tell the audience how they were supposed to be reacting to what was happening in the story, which felt very condescending to me. You know, like, we're supposed it's to be excited of, at this part in the story, so we cut to this audience, and they're all cheering. And it's it. kind of like a cop-out. Like, that's the through line for the screenplay, rather than showing us. It's just, it, he can just straight up address us. I would it's say, yeah, way. I would say it was like a crutch, but I would only say that if it needed it, and it was really relying on it. But I felt all these emotional points anyway and i knew what i was supposed to feel and how i was supposed to react so i think it's a pretty good script and it, you could just cut it all out and i don't think it would really lose anything it would just be better um but See, yeah I, I think my greatest problem with the screenplay is that i don't really care about morton downey jr and the screenplay doesn't make me care about him the hmm. far more interesting story here is the one related to the evolution of news media Okay. So, like, his life and the personal details of his life are pretty unimportant to me. Well... He's not, like, yeah. that noteworthy of a person. He didn't have much of a personal life, though, to me. That that was one thing that... We see a lot of shit with him, like... He, he like, just, has... like... He has a lot of fling, Having sex with groupies with, and yeah. being in love with Lori. Yeah. His girlfriend that but, he cheats on his wife with. Yeah, there's also, like, a very small subplot with his daughter picking a college and he wants her to stay close to home and she doesn't and there's some, like some... understandable why, why wouldn't you want to get away from this dude <laughs> he's yeah he's he's a kind of a bad dude but um i i found him fascinating as a character and i i was still engaged and i i cared about him um okay you're i think you're just heartless uh well it's quite the turn from last week <laughs> you said i had so way too much empathy for these characters right um clearly you clearly are schizophrenic. unstable <laughs> yeah um anyway no i i didn't like uh 
exactly sympathize with the guy, but I thought he was he was fascinating. But okay. Anyway, what I wanted to say about that whole framing device thing of yeah. the or the flash forward thing, it would have worked for me if they had done something slightly different with one of the two times that we see that scene. We see it once at the very beginning with no context. He's just in a bathroom. He's like beat up, draws a swastika on his face. We find out later in the script that he he's like faking this. He says that he was attacked by some skinheads as a way. It's like a desperate sort of a and desperate that, grab for just to retain the spotlight while his show well, is kind of going down. Well, I think it's kind of two, twofold. Okay. I think he, it's like a really it's a moment of extreme self-loathing. And uh-huh. he wants to hurt himself. He just, yeah. I forget exactly what preceded this, well, it, but it was he had just fucked shortly, up pretty bad. It was shortly after his wife decided to leave him. Right, and he got dropped by the San Francisco, his show got dropped by the West Coast affiliate. Right. Meaning that they just went from like a viewer, potential viewership of like 76 million to like 46 million. Yeah, so like, like almost cut it in half. So bad career move, and he's feeling pretty lousy. And yeah. then, yeah, it's just a... It's kind like of a ploy. attention grab to get yeah. himself back in the headlines. Right, right. So anyway, what I was thinking would have made it work for me was if in the beginning they somehow managed to sell it as he really was attacked. And we, we don't know better because we have no context yet. Yeah. He's just saying he was attacked by these skinheads. And then when we catch up to it later in the story, we realize, oh, he did that to himself. That's, right. That, that would have been more effective. That would have been great. That's what those things should do, if you ask me. Well, I feel like when that's kind of what Joy did, if I can we, interject. Okay, you go, but, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, all I mean is when we come back to revisit that scene that we, we saw a preview of in the beginning, we should now have more context for it and understand it in a new way. I didn't feel like that happened in Joy. I felt like all it was was the, a repeat of the same Well, no, thing. in Joy, we... Enjoy it's ambiguous. It could be a great moment. It could be a terrible moment. We don't know. It's there's no context for it, and it's on the precipice of being one or the other, mm-hmm. and then eventually it becomes a great moment, a triumphant moment for for Joy. We find out later. Still, still didn't work for me. Um, I don't know if we want to revisit or come back to this, but I also don't understand why like people cared so much whether he did it to himself. Like I don't understand why his daughter cared so much that he did it to himself. I, well, if I was his daughter, I would care. I, I thought you were gonna say I don't see why like the public cared. Which I mean, I, don't I, think I get they... I get why the public cares insofar as he's either a sympathetic character or like a really messed up person. I think, which, and it's I mean, not that his yeah. daughter his daughter knew that he did it to himself because I guess it was pretty obvious. Yeah, she just wanted him to admit it, and he still wouldn't even to his daughter. He was like, "No, I was really attacked." Well, like, why is that the final straw? He didn't pay his daughter's college tuition. He's been a terrible <laughs> was, father. He cheated on his on his daughter's was, mother countless yeah, times. Yeah, she was surprisingly chill about the whole college thing and that that last conversation between him and his daughter. She's like, "Look, let's forget about the whole thing where you didn't pay my college tuition." Right, like I, I not yeah. Just tell me if you attacked your if if you were really attacked or not. And he's like, yeah, I was. And she was upset because she clearly knows he actually did it to himself. I just feel like in the pantheon of things that he's done, <laughs> it's like that's, <laughs> that's not that's not the deal breaker for but me. But it's the most recent one that he's done, and I think I she guess. just wanted to know that he was going to change, and that hopefully this was like a him turning over a new leaf. But he was still... it though? Because it was just him being the attention have... horror that he's been. No, the but it could have it could have been if he apologized and admitted it to then. her. But yeah. it still would have been the same. No, I think I I get it to a certain extent. Like she doesn't want to bring up the past. She just wants to know that from here on out he might have a yeah. chance of being a better person. But no, still no. Which I kind of liked. I think that was part. I don't know why that moment comes then. Like, yeah, why not just like a month from after that, when he hasn't just done something stupid. Yeah, I really wonder how it actually happened because it felt a little too convenient that this was she like shows up right after. Yeah, he yeah. was still in the studio, and he just learned about the show getting canceled, and then she just appears there in the studio, and they have this heart to heart thing. That felt a little convenient. I don't know if that's how it actually happened in real life, but. Um, Oh, but what I was going to say was, I think maybe part of the reason that I started to like the script more was when I realized the direction it was headed in, because I kind of thought, this is sort of what I was saying about Joy, too, where it seemed like the story was kind of idolizing her too much, and she never did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. That's not the case here. They clearly make him out to be a terrible dude, but they also really celebrate, like, his genius 
at in creating this show and foreseeing the future of television. Do they? Like, they yeah, they call him like a prophet at times. The other and, characters call him yeah, a prophet. Yeah, yeah, but I think the script really wants you to like admire that about him and see him as some kind of a genius. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's what I, think, I just bring to it. But like that just annoys me to like know that like, does. I, well, that's I, what I'm saying. That yeah. that annoys me. But especially if it is carried out to like a successful end which in this case the reason i think i i came around on the script was because i could tell it actually was going to end really badly and he kind of did get his comeuppance i mean even though you know he had his lasting impact on the medium of television his life really did kind of fall apart and he was he was punished for all the things that he had done and so that i think kind of sold me a little bit more on it like i don't i don't think what he's doing i don't know it's just Maybe my personal opinion. I don't think what he's doing is like genius. Like just being. I don't think so either. You know. Yeah. It's yeah. like I watch a lot of like sports television. It's like Skip Bayless just says the most asinine, ridiculous shit, and people tune in to it just because they disagree with it because he's knowing like he's not as dumb as he's playing, and he's yeah. saying stuff that he knows is stupid and wrong just to get ratings, and I don't like that. Yeah, it's just bad for the world. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> um there was a really cool montage in here i well i thought it was really cool it's a split screen montage where on one side of the screen you're seeing kind of his life with Lori and his his sort of secret life with this girl and they're just living it up having a great time and the other half of the montage is his like home life and and sort of his work life too falling apart all at once you get you get all these shots on either side of the screen and it was really cool i just haven't seen that done before and i thought it was clever and it worked and it was all set to never gonna give you up the rickroll song you know that whole thing oh of course yeah yeah um which which is pretty i i was i thought it was great because that's i think it's actually an appropriate use of the song like uh in terms of i can like i can see a lot of movies trying to do a rickroll just as a joke and it's just for the sake of the joke but like here is it the lyrics actually kind of make sense is it um appropriate like time wise like i think so yeah chronistically? I think, yeah i think that song came out around that time it suited the it, it felt right for this type of movie and it i think really helped with the like 80s vibe i don't know i got a very good 80s vibe out of it i can't even explain why well it's not even that much 80s it's, it's like, like 80s, very 90s. very late 80s early yeah. 90s i guess but no you're right there were a few scenes which did not contain Mort, just re- like really briefly, sometimes even just parts of scenes. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to make a point about that because it never mattered to me. It never worked. And I feel like... That's like the Rebecca and uh, Billy Boggs scene. Yeah, and it felt really obvious to me that you should just lose those. Like, I think a good writer should be able to look at a script and see if it's veering towards something that could easily just all be in the point of view of one character. And if it seems like it's working that way, which this clearly is, most, like, 99% of the scenes are from Mort's point of view, Mm -hmm. you might as well go all out and just eliminate any of the other scenes because, yeah, they felt really out of place to me. In this case, I really agree with you because 98, 99% of the screenplay is involves him or a scene from his point of view. And the structural device... Like with the voiceover, uh-huh. um, is like his subjective experience. So the yeah. screenplay really is inside the head of yeah Mart. So yeah, I felt like we're not getting enough of Billy and Rebecca to really yeah justify the, the inclusion. I don't think. Yeah, Billy was like one of the producers on the show, and and one of his friends for a while before he right they had a falling out, but. Yeah. He yeah he falls for a girl who also works on the show and they they have a like a good relationship in contrast to most of Mort's relationships I guess right. like Mort's really a despicable person. Uh, yeah. Mort at one point promotes Rebecca and then has her unzip his pants <laughs> and help him pee. Yeah, and help him pee. I thought it was gonna, like, it could have been worse. Steven. Knowing knowing no it, it it can't I mean it could be worse yeah sure but it's pretty bad knowing that. Rebecca is like dating his he's best friend and also he's with someone already he's like cheating with the girl that he's cheating on his wife with yeah basically exactly. like there's only so many like iterations of that like yeah so yeah he's he's a bad dude but 
I just don't know why it poked you so much because I know you you constantly are making the point that like you hate it when people dislike movies because they they didn't think the characters were likable. And right, now that I just seems don't like care what you're, about this character though. It's not that you don't like him; it's that you I, don't. I care. one don't like him, but I don't dislike the screenplay because I dislike uh-huh, him. Uh-huh. I just don't really care about his life too much. Ouch. Yeah, um, I would have liked a more intense look at the business side of it and how or how that show appeals to people this was just him escalating 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 and somehow that always aligns with what the audience wants i would like a more in-depth examination of that relationship Hmm. um i'd like the movie to center on that rather than on the particulars of his life because he's not the most interesting part of this screenplay to me do you mean like you don't care so much about like the fate of the show? I don't care or... about the fate of the show. I care about the fate of news media more. Okay. Well, that's that's a lofty thing. I think I don't right. Know, it's tricky, some... and I think that's what they're going for, and they're using him yeah. as a, as a jumping off point. I don't know, but I I guess I don't yeah. know how I would write that, but yeah, maybe maybe I like it for reasons that go against what it's trying to do, actually. Because yeah, I think you're kind of right. I think it's trying to make some kind of a larger statement about TV. But um, we don't really get enough. It's just that he a- appeals to the lowest common denominator, but we don't really come to an understanding of how that denominator is achieved. Yeah. Like, what is... Like, why do people gravitate towards that? You know? Right. Yeah. It, like, it, it just says people like this stuff. It appeals to them on a base level. But I want to know, like, why it appeals to people on a base level. And okay. I would like a more in-depth examination of that um, rather than his myriad affairs. Yeah. For example. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was trying to form some kind of an argument, but I think it just comes down to me liking sort of, It's maybe it's almost a nostalgia thing because of what time period I, I knew this was. And I mean, I was barely alive at this time, but... Um, it's just fascinating to me, and and I guess the fact that it was a true story almost worked in its favor for me, which is saying something because usually I don't like that. But mm-hmm. the fact that I knew this was real, and yet I had never heard of the guy, I pretty much assumed it wasn't going to end well, and I kind of I didn't right. I didn't think it mattered so much what the fate of the show was because again, yeah, I I sort of agree with you. I didn't care that much about the fate of the show because I assumed, all right, well it's clearly like not a very widely known show now people don't really at least a lot of people i know haven't heard of it Mm -hmm. um so it made it more about the characters to me and not so much about the show which i really the only character sorry but the really the only character here is more because no one else gets that much time yeah i guess but i i took it as i thought it was interesting enough just on that level um and I think this is exactly the kind of movie, I'm sorry, this is exactly the kind of person that we should be making this kind of movie about. Because it's someone who was undeniably really important, and yet pretty much no one, not, I'm not going to say that, but a lot of people nowadays don't know who he is. Yeah. So I think that's the perfect subject for a movie like this. And a lot of the stuff is still pretty relevant. I mean, he was talking about some issues that are still really relevant it today. didn't come across that he was really talking about them well it was more like he was acknowledging them he yeah. was uh maybe was possibly like, making them worse actually but yeah uh there was like a he case was fostering hatred yeah yeah um no it's, you're right it's though. kind it's of still those hot button issues are still hot button issues it, today. and it's kind of refreshing in a, in a messed up way to look back and see like oh man yeah i thought things were bad now but they were just as bad or worse before. Yeah. That's just something reassuring, reassuring about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think this is like a, it's like well-written. I don't know. It's, I feel like it's just to me, if we're going to get, are we going to move into like verdicts? Um, Do you have sure. else, other stuff to say? Um, not, not really. Um, I feel like it's a very proficient kind of more or less proficient screenplay. It's just, I would probably air, I would probably pass on both. Wow. But I don't think it's bad like some of the other ones we've read, you know? Uh-huh. I don't know where you would fall. 
I was going to say consider on both. Okay. Um, I, it's a story that I would be willing to watch. I would watch this movie, and I think it's written, yeah, pretty adeptly. I think I would like to read something else by this guy. Would so if you if you were producing this movie, would you have them cut the Mort addressing the empty stage? I, yeah, I would audience? absolutely cut cut the one man show just, thing. And you think the screenplay works without it? Yeah, I, I think you could There's almost there. just cut it out, and almost nothing else would need to be changed. Because a be lot fine. a lot of Mort's perspective we get through that monologue. Yeah, I don't know. Like him telling us how he thinks and what he wants us to think. Most of the time it felt redundant to me. Like I said, I felt like yeah. I was already picking up on the cues and I was already reacting in the way that he was trying to tell me to react in those little maybe I would Maybe I would react more positively than if I just if I read it without. Yeah. And then if they had also made the change to the opening thing, the way I said it should be, just... Mm -hmm. I guess I'm I'm considering it with those changes in mind, but they're such easy fixes that 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 makes me more inclined to go ahead and consider it sure yeah uh this this script also i just wanted to say it reminded me a little bit of have you seen man on the moon i haven't but i actually thought about that i don't know why because yeah. i've never seen the well trailer. there are a lot of similarities that i don't know if it it's like meaningful similarities because i don't think that the movies are trying to do the same thing exactly but they're both movies about a figure who changed their their medium well in in man on the moon it was andy kaufman and stand-up comedy but there were some interesting just like incidental parallels like the wrestling thing um i know this we said this guy this writer is writing a script about wrestlers but mm -hmm. also i feel like there's an element of that in this script where it's about showboating and like spectacle and persona um right all that's of that, actually yeah that's really nice all of that plays in and, and yeah andy kaufman had a whole wrestling bit that he went through like a phase in his career where he was doing that sort of as, as a joke there's also the really important like sidekick character which we didn't really talk about billy in this much but he and he and morton were very close and they were friends and he was his producer and helped launch the show yeah so there was a character in man on the moon played by danny devito played mm. a very similar role um yeah i don't know i just feel like, and, oh and it took place in like the 70s and the 80s but the fact that it was like somewhat a period sort of a period i don't know if you could call it a period is there a time limit on what you can call a period piece like how far back it needs to be 2014 man <laughs> you can do a 2014 january period piece. 2000 Jan january 2015 <laughs> um but they were both yeah set set in the past and i don't know they they had a lot in common. Man, the moon is good though. Check it out. So uh, is that... you'd consider the screenplay, consider the writer, and recommend Man on the Moon. Um, yeah, I guess I think it carries less weight to say you recommend a movie than the right, kind of right, recommendation right, right. we're talking about, because the movie's already been made. It's not like the fate of the script is in Hanks my in the balance. Yeah. yeah, but sure, yeah, go see it. It's a it's a good movie. Cool. So, I don't feel like we were very funny this time. No? Mm -mm. Are we usually funny? Sometimes. Yeah, well, it didn't really provoke strong feelings in me. That's really honest. the worst, isn't it? Like It's fun to hate it's, something. It's, it's like it's... a competent read, and yeah. I just don't care enough about it to recommend it, I guess. Yeah, isn't, yeah. That, isn't that the worst? It's, it's I mean, fun. probably for our podcast. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. it's, fun. <laughs> it's fun to hate something or to really like tear something apart. And it's fun to really like something and praise it, but if it's just mediocre, what can you do with that? Yeah. Well, it's best when, like, we feel passionately about it on opposite ends yeah. of the spectrum. Like yeah. Yellowstone, I guess. <laughs> you always bring that one up. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's, like, the one example. I think the most divisive we've been. That yeah. and, I guess, Manchester, but I don't think you disliked Manchester as much as I disliked. Yeah. Or probably maybe you did. Probably not. No, I, I don't know. Speaking of, Manchester by the Sea, premiering at the Sundance Film Festival this January. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be a treat. All right. Next week, we're going to read a script called The Lady in the Van by Alan Bennett. This movie comes out on January 15th, and it has Maggie Smith in it. Um, and it says here, A man forms an unexpected bond with a transient woman living in her car that's parked in his driveway. <laughs>